Honda's Jet Lawrence flipped the script and reclaimed the championship points lead at Southwick. After trading trouble in the first motos the last two weeks, the Lawrence brothers look to battle today with the lead on the line at round seven from Minnesota. We're in Millville, Minnesota. It's round seven of the Lucas Oil Pro Moto Cross Championship, sanctioned by AMA Pro Racing, the Frescato's Tortillas Spring Creek National. Hello everyone, Jason Wigan here for Lucas Oil Pro Moto Cross. All season long, we're joined by former champions of the sport as we celebrate 50 years of American motocross and a really special opportunity today to talk to not only a two-time champion, but a rider that knows this track better than anyone because he lives here, Jeremy Martin. To say that Jeremy Martin grew up at the racetrack is not an exaggeration. His parents, John and Greta, own the track here at Spring Creek, and Jeremy and his older brother Alex grew up helping keep the track up, picking up trash, or doing whatever the folks asked. From those humble beginnings, Jeremy has fashioned one of the most successful 250 careers in the past two decades. His back-to-back -back championships were the springboard from which the current star racing Yamaha dynasty was built. And since the 2014 season, J-Mart has won at least one overall in every season he's lined up. A career with 40 250 moto wins, 20 overall victories, and 45 overall podiums has put Jeremy Martin in the conversation as one of the most dominant 250 motocross riders of all time. So it's awesome to have you here with us today, Jeremy. Uh, your perspective on the track is going to help, but when we talk our 250 championship, we have two brothers battling, and you also have experience with that. You battled your brother Alex for a lot of wins in this class, so it's been fun to watch the Lawrences flop both directions this year. Yeah, you're definitely right. It's been the Lawrence, so, Lawrence show so far this year, and uh, can Hunter get in there and maybe get some points back on his brother? So that's exciting. Maybe uh, Shimoda was pretty quick today in practice, so can Shimoda get up there and uh, battle with those guys? Yeah, we'll he's see. the only one to have beaten the Lawrence brothers this year, Joe Shimoda. Okay, now let's talk about the racetrack and what makes Spring Creek special. Yeah, Spring Creek is pretty special, I think. Just the natural elevation. Uh, obviously, the soil's really good. There's not too many rocks, and uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's quite it's just a unique place. And the riders definitely love it. We're looking forward to our first 250 moto of the day. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Lucas Oil. Keep that engine alive. General Tire, for whatever you do, General Tire delivers. And by Honda, celebrating 50 years of off-road dominance. Take you for a ride here at Millville Spring Creek. Got the GoPro here at Michael Mosman for qualifying earlier. Headed to the infamous sand rollers. Yeah, look at him come right in through here. He's gotta be in at least third or fourth gear. You can kind of hear that thing revving to the moon trying to keep that front end light just carry as much speed as possible and there's that dirt the riders love so much back there pretty unique option right there I saw a couple guys tripling off there and here he is trying to get a clean out here and just rip this turn before he heads right on up to the hill yeah headed toward the chatapult some of the uphill jumps that's your GoPro course preview good job by Michael Moseman now let's send a trackside reporting all day from there will be Jason Thomas JT Earlier this morning, Justin Cooper was your fastest qualifier. Now that's nothing new for Cooper, as out of 55 tries, he has been your fastest qualifier 24 times. That's an astounding 44% success rate. Now the trouble for 2022 is he hasn't been, tr been transitioning those into wins. So today, the, the real situation here is he's got to find a way to win. The points have gotten away from him, but there's a lot of racing left in this series. He's got to find a way to transition that fastest qualifying time into a win. No doubt about it, last year he's in a championship fight with Jet Lawrence. He's fourth in points this year. It's not quite been the same coming back from an injury as we get ready here for moto number one. It'll be 30 minutes and two laps. Keys to the moto, courtesy of KTM. Jeremy Martin, what do we need to do today? Yeah, so today for me is getting a clean start. If you can get out there, if you're on the ground, obviously, that's not good. Um, and the other thing is being aware of the lines. It, they probably put down some water here in the beginning stages of this race, so be aware of that. Um, and the lines change. The soil is obviously really good, so um, just being aware. Yes, but uh, the soil varies quite a bit, you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. So it looks pretty good, like you can just get in there and go full gas into it, um, but it's definitely kind of deceiving. It's, it's got a hard base underneath, and it can be slick. 
At the top of the show, we talked about the points battle between the 1 and the 96. That's Jet and Hunter Lawrence. This battle really picked up at Redbud when Jet was leading the way. Then the engine starts smoking. He's pointing out the machine to his crew, and then the engine lets go. And just like that, Hunter Lawrence finds himself with a points lead, leaving Redbud. But then Hunter at Southwick last weekend would have problems of his own. First with a bad start, and then this. Yeah, man, he put himself in a bad position with that bad start. And then look at him coming through. Just gets tangled up with the rider, and he's really lucky he didn't get hurt. Yes, almost got speared by one of the riders. He extracts some revenge here from Styles Robertson, who he felt caused that by moving over, and then they really got into it. Yeah, that's some good old-fashioned racing right there. He's a little <laughs> aggressive right there and just worked up. Okay, that doesn't offend you. Okay, and uh, we'll, we'll try to reset it today. Hunter actually entered Southwick with a seven-point lead. He's now 15 down on Jet, who swept that weekend and went 1-1 at our last race. And Shimoda, as you mentioned at the top, coming on strong here. Yeah, he's looking good. Something must be going on there. Is I want, I'd be curious to see what he's got going on behind the scenes because he's really looking good. Yeah, he's stepped up and he's been really strong late in the motos especially. See if he can get a little better starts today because last week he was trying to catch Jet Lawrence in both of the motos. So ready to go here. Jason Wygant, Jeremy Martin, Jason Thomas on hand to give you the call live on Mav TV and Mav TV on Flow Racing as we get ready for our first of four motos. 250's race first today. We'll have 450 Moto 1 at the top of the next hour. But right now, a pivotal round as we begin the second half of a 12-round championship fly racing. 30-second card is up, and the mechanics move away. So now it's 40 riders and nothing but rider against rider. And the right-hand high-speed first turn will go into those sand rollers. This is going to be action-packed here live on Mav TV. Wait for the car to go sideways. There is Shimoda, one at Redbud, second overall last week. He is starting to surge. Who can take it to the Lawrences today? Revs are up. Gates down. Oh, looks like Jack got a good jump. Yeah, how can he fashion it into the first turn? No, oh, Jet's oh, going to come Jack across the line. It. Yeah, it I think like, it was Cooper. It yep. looked like uh, Cooper might have had it, but he pushed his front end a little bit there. And then Cooper retakes it. Now he's on the inside, oh. side by side. It's Jet Lawrence, Justin Cooper. They've already passed each other twice. Right now, Jet locks it down. Yep, there he is running running into the whoops right there. And what do you think? Do you think Jay Cooper could get a run on him and get in there? Well, this is the key. Oh, yes. Hunter Lawrence got a good start as well. So he's right where you want to be. It's Seth Hamaker in fourth. And then Voland on the orange KTM coming through in fifth. So this is the critical juncture because Cooper is so strong early in the races. Can he keep Jet in sight? Yeah, the intensity right now for these guys is full bore. You know, the, the heart rate's wide open, and they're just all out everything they got just to try to assert dominance and get up front. And Hunter does not want to mess around with Cooper. He wants to keep pace with his brother. He's already going for the number two spot. Does he have it at the top of the hill? No. Oh, hard to figure out where to go at the top there. Yeah, look tough. Look at him. Jumping down there. I wonder if Hunter can maybe make a run here coming up. Mount Cooper's Martin. making a run. And oh. look at that line just materialize, and he goes from being attacked for second to taking over the lead. Uh, do you think the inside obviously was better there? Did Jet not see that coming? Yeah, I don't know. It's tough. I mean, maybe he kind of thought there'd be a good dozer burn there on the outside. He could go rip it, um, but unfortunately, it didn't play, didn't play out. So Justin Cooper now back to the lead on the Monster Energy Yamaha Star Racing Machine. Jet and Hunter Lawrence in the... Oh, and Cooper tips over, and that slows up Jet. So Hunter Lawrence is going to go from third to first. Tough break for Cooper. Man, what a first lap. Yeah, right? Oh. Seen four or five uh, different passes. So, ah, uh, Justin Cooper, as Jason Thomas said, was trying to translate that qualifying speed into a good moto. Now he's got his work cut out for him. He's mired to the back, and Shimoda's back there with him. Yeah. This is 14th place. Wow, so yeah, that changed in a hurry, and it's all to the advantage of Hunter Lawrence as they work their way through traffic. Man, it's going to be tough on Cooper now. Yeah, he's got a lot of work cut out for him, man. Nothing better than rounding the first turn and being up front, and then when you go down that first lap, it is so, in a way, demoralizing, you know? Well, uh, you and I were talking when we were at break, we were watching the riders on the sight lap with uh, throwing water down on the track, doing a little track maintenance. What do you think got him here? Yeah, it looked like he came in pretty hot right there, and I don't know, maybe it was just a little bit of wet conditions there, and the, the berm didn't look quite developed yet, and you can just see he just pushed the front end. And Jet was lucky to not go down there. He did get passed by not only Hunter Lawrence, but Hamaker as well. So Seth Hamaker on the Monster Pro Circuit Kawasaki is second, and this is exactly the break Hunter Lawrence was looking for. So last week's problems really started with a bad start for Hunter, so he's at least fixed that problem. Oh, here comes Jet. Big leap. 
This is what we want to see. The boys, the, the brothers are about to tee off here. Yep. How long can Hamaker hold on? It looked like Jed had the pass made over that jump. Hamaker fights him off. We're going to go back uphill. Oh, Jed, another mistake. Still gets the power down to the ground of that Honda. And it looks like he's about to take over second. He's got it. Nice recovery from Jet. Man, that was a scary moment. Almost yeah, that was really good. A couple wild moments there for him, but, you know, that's the opening laps. You kind of send it a little bit more than maybe you want to just, to just to try to get up there and get by, guys. Well, he doesn't want to get held up with the hunter in the lead, I would imagine, no, right? No, absolutely. Oh, oh, and that is Moseman, who we had just talked about how fast he has been going this year. Tough break for him. And he was really strong early in the year. Had a moto win at round two at Hangtown and nearly won a moto at round four at high point, but now it has come undone, and he looks shaken up. So we're back to the standard story. Lawrence Brothers up front, Hunter versus Jet. There is Hamaker third. Bolin a good start, he's fourth. Nate Thrasher in fifth. Robertson, and then we have Hampshire in seventh. Mumford, Derek Kelly, the privateer, has been doing very well on the AEO Power Sports machine, he's ninth. And how about Ryder D. Francesco? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. 10. Yep, so that is his second pro race for Ryder D. Race with us at Redbud. But man, so far this is much better for Hunter Lawrence than last week. Yeah, absolutely. You know he was frustrated leaving Southwick. He's like, man, I left some stuff on the table. Comes out here, gets a good start, and then now he's making it tough on his brother. Okay, now you have dealt with this. You and your brother Alex battled for years in this class. And we also talk about how they ride and train. They do everything the same and their teammates. So. We've been waiting for tensions to rise. Yeah, you know, I, yeah. I'm kind of wondering, honestly, if, yeah. if the tension's going to build. But, you know, when I was racing with my brother, um, you know, loved the guy to death. And uh, I wanted to beat him really, really bad. He wanted to beat me badly. Um, but there's there's no escape in it. And ultimately, oh, oh no, Hunter, Hunter. Made a mistake. Yes, he goes off the racetrack. And just like that, his lead is gone. Jet's right there. It's tightening up. Here we go. Yep. Well, that was the break Jet needed after uh, he got tangled up with Cooper earlier. And Jet. Immediately on the attack, big leap into the rollers. Wow. Can he keep that rear wheel driving? Hunter's going to oh, push him wide. That was a good defensive deal right there. Took the outside away from him. Yep. Jet had the momentum. Hunter wouldn't let him have it. Now, he can't do that here. There's berm separating these lines. Oh, so Jet's got to run at it. Can he get a drive on him? It's what he did to Hamaker to take over second. Puts okay. the Honda back in the ground. Honda versus the Honda just battling. <laughs> <laughs> this time, Hunter's able to hold him off. Oh, nice job to slice inside by Jet. Side by side down the hill. Oh, Hunter had to tiptoe to make that inside line work. Oh, yeah, here we go. It's a drag race. Jet's got the momentum side by oh. side at the top. He's going to be in the inside, Jeremy, here when they get to the top of the hill. Hunter's got to beat him to the spot. Jet! Uh, oh, and he... Yeah, takes, that goes was, to the wheel. That was good work there by Jet. He really went in there and uh, just defended the line and made sure he put a stamp on it so his brother couldn't get him. He had to know that Hunter was going to try to defend oh, that. Oh, absolutely. Here we go. Oh, and he gets him back. Oh, Hunter creases that berm almost a little too much. Side by side into the corner. What a battle between the Lawrence brothers again here at Millville. A nice rematch from where we were a few weeks ago at High Point. Right now, Jet able to maintain the lead. That's Mosman. Mosman taking a ride there in the Alpine Stars Medic Mule as we go back to this battle, Jet versus Hunter. And Hunter doesn't want to let him get away. And this is exact this is exactly what you want to see from the Lawrence brothers right here. You know these guys aren't going to do anything too dirty. They're brothers. They want the best for each other. They're gonna it's gonna be clean, hard racing the entire time. Man, that was so awesome at the top of that hill where Hunter was trying to get over to the left. And Chet just wouldn't make it happen. No, it was awesome. So we set fourth here. They're already starting to pull away. They got about three seconds. There you see Hamaker in third. Then Bolin, Thrasher, that's three, four, five. Styles Robertson has really been strong as of late. Off to another good start. He is sixth. Then it's Hampshire and Cooper recovering from the crash is eighth. Good battle here between Hamaker and Bolin. Now Bolin has been pretty quietly effective throughout this series. Hasn't had starts like this to really show everybody how fast he's been going, but he's on a roll right now. Yeah, if I remember correctly, last year he had a pretty good start too in, in one of the motos, and he was up there front battle, and I had to actually pass him. And okay. then he got me back, so it's cool <laughs> to see uh, he's back out here again. Another good start in it and fighting up front. Okay, this is for third again in the moto between Hamaker and Volan. Oh, Volan's putting a lot of pressure on. Yeah. Going to try the outside. This is the line Lawrence, Jet Lawrence, had been using to get the momentum. Doesn't quite have as much speed around the outside. Oh, he is all over Hamaker. Going to try the inside now. Is there room? You, what do you think? You send it down the downhill and try to maybe come on the outside here. He might get him going out Mount Martin. 
He's going to try it as you watch the fly battle box. That is Jet and Hunter going up the hill, battling for the lead, while we continue to watch third and fourth with Hamaker and Folan. And Thrasher is the next rider up. Awesome to have this look. We've never had the drone to show you Mount Martin before. Yeah, it's amazing, man. And, and the TV doesn't do it justice, just how steep that Mount Martin is. Look at Hunter. Could run into that corner. He closed up a little bit on the entrance down the hill. So he's right there, absolutely not letting Jet go. This could be an all-out duel for 30 plus two. Wouldn't that be neat? That'd be awesome. That's what the fans want to see. And by the way, it's not... It's getting hotter today, but it's not the uh, most oppressive heat we've seen. So these guys are going to go the distance, you would imagine. And yeah, Hunter is just camped out right there in second. Does he even want to, Jeremy, necessarily go for the pass right now? Or is he kind of waiting it out? Obviously, you want to apply pressure, but um, I don't. I mean, they got a lot of racing le right. uh, left yet. So you think um, maybe maybe sit behind your brother, learn what he's doing, see uh, see maybe he has a couple better lines. But if you if you feel like you have the pace, which he's trying, he's really trying to get in there, make the move, and maybe Hunter really just wants to go full gas the whole time. He is going wherever Jet is not. I mean, they are on different parts all the way around this racetrack, and we're headed to the sand rollers. And this is where Hunter lost a lot of the gap he had built up. He made a mistake. Oh, Hunter sideways. Here we go, into the whoops. Oh, this is fantastic to have them this close back here. Looked like Hunter might have been setting something up, but it didn't work out. Yeah. Send it back down to uh, JT, who has their team manager. So I'm with Lars Winstrom. Now, Lars, you got to be a little bit stressed out. You're running 1-2 in the points, 1-2 in the race. They're brothers. Is there any team orders? You guys just say, hey, keep it clean. No, I'm not stressed out at all. <laughs> this is awesome. I mean, watching them battle like this, you know it's going to be clean. Um, nothing, nothing to worry about as far as that goes. Uh, Hunter's doing what he's got to do right now. He's got to hang on, which he did that last lap doing a 12-9. So he's doing everything he can and uh, making it interesting. So I'm having nothing but a good time watching them race. So, Lars says he's not stressed out, but guys, I'm telling you, I can see the look on his face. He's, he's a little stressed down here. Well, it has been close several times between them in this moto. Yeah, absolutely. But like Lars, Lars said, you know, they're going to keep it clean. They're brothers. You know, you don't want to take your brother out. But, uh, you know, if, if, I'm, if I'm Jet right now and I'm in this position, I'm winning and someone's on me, I'm all about trying to protect my line. And also, I'm focused on trying to race the track. I'm looking forward. I'm trying to race my lap time. Can I be a little bit faster here this lap? What can I do to try to get a little bit of a gap? Because you know you can hear him accelerating. When you're shutting off the gas coming into a turn, you can hear Hunter wide open. You know that. I know what that feels like. <laughs> <laughs> That's pressure being applied. And there you see the uh, lap time story. Last time around, Jet with a 2.13.4, and then you heard Lars mention the 2.12.9. Hunter was about a half second quicker last time around, and as we get back to this finish line area, he's once again looking for an opening to make the pass. Hunter Lawrence all over Jet right now for the lead. And he's got the opening, and he makes the pass. Now, wow. was that a pass, or is that Jet saying, you're going to sit on my back wheel and learn my lines. I'm going to sit on the back wheel of you. We'll find out how they play this right now because so much of that race at High Point came down to line choice and who was in the right place at the right time. So Hunter Lawrence back to the lead. This is good racing. Maybe Jack can learn something now here. Maybe he'll catch up on a couple lines from Hunter and then you never know, the roles could reverse. Well, that's what I'm saying. So in that corner, you think that was an all-out attempt by Jet to stop Hunter from making the pass? Or is Jed not mind being in this position right now? You know, Jet's been doing this for quite a while now. He's won many different ways. so. If I had to assume, I'm sure I'm sure Jet Jet's probably not stoked, but he's a racer, right? And you can't control. All you can do is control how you're thinking. And he's obviously wanting to race forward. And and you can see it right here. He's applying the pressure on his brother right now. So guys, what I'm noticing is every weekend Jet gets into this pattern where in the middle of the moto, he starts to lose a little bit of the intensity. If you watched last weekend, Joe Shimoda and Levi Kitchen wheeled him in around this time in the moto. It seems like he's going through that same thing with Hunter at the moment. Now what's critical here is that can he pick the pace back up at the end and pull back away from Hunter. So that's what he's going to be watching for. Yeah, that's right. There's no doubt about it that Hunter has the speed right now. It was faster the previous lap, and then this lap he made the pass, but Jet is right back in it. And he put a run going down that downhill. Did you see that? Yeah, that was impressive. That was Jet there on the inside, right, trying to set something up. Oh, but then in the next section, Hunter stretches it. 
So Hunter got the lead up to about 10 bike lengths right now. What has Hunter done here in these last three or four corners? He is checking out. So impressive run by the 96, and boy, did he need this in the biggest way after a struggle day at Southwick. And now we're going to see, is this just the natural pace of Hunter uh, pulling away from Jet, or is Jet having that mid-race low? Can Jet pick it back up? Let's see the gap now. 1.8 seconds. seconds. man. He really made up some time in the back of that back of the track over there. Yeah, at the end of the downhill, all the way through to the finish line. Look at this. He is stretching it. As we go back to this battle, I think you've got uh, Hampshire and Robertson in this mix as well. You're watching the fly battle box. Boland is up to third. He's got around Hamaker. Then it's Thrasher. Hampshire, Robertson, Thrasher all duking it out. And the Yamaha, I believe, in that drone shot is Cooper. So it's Cooper and Shimoda with Ryder Francesco right behind him. So that's who we're watching. Eighth, ninth, and tenth. So Cooper trying to recover. And he's got Shimoda right with him. And it's like a freight train watching mm -hmm. these guys coming to the sand wash right now. Okay, Cooper trying to set something up on Styles Robertson. Can't quite get there. Then Shimoda going to hang this inside line. Oh, nice charge oh. by Cooper. Hopped right to the top. Yeah, he did good work right there, getting up over that big mound there and was able to make the move. That has got to be a little scary to attempt that one. Did you oh, get it wrong? Yeah, absolutely. Especially when you know you're, you don't quite have enough momentum, but you still go for it and both tires clip. <laughs> you never know how that's going to go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Could be bad. Shimoda looks like he's making the move now as well. We go back to this battle. This is Thrasher on the outside and Hamaker on the inside. This is fourth and fifth. Then right behind them, you have Hampshire. And then the battle we were just watching with Cooper and the rest of the group. This is good stuff between Hamaker and Thrasher to the top of Mount Martin. Fourth and fifth. All right, Thrasher, can he get a run down this hill? Hey, we're halfway through. Uh, that happened quick. God, it was a really quick moto yeah. so far. 15 minutes down, 15 minutes to go. You can save 15% or more on your insurance with a 15-minute phone call to Geico. This is a good ride for Thrasher. He seems like he's really driving the track, and he's really trying to trying to move forward here and he's um he's moving around he's looking for different lines behind hamaker and and trying to trying to make the move this is a track with some bad memories for me he actually got tagged by another rider in those sand whoops last year and ended up hurting his shoulder and uh, missing the rest of the season so he's back with a vengeance today at spring creek look at hampshire starting to sneak in the camera there he's always bulldog in that hard charger oh yeah he will not cheat you for effort that's hampshire on the 24 the white Rockstar Husqvarna, you said a freight train. It is really tightening up. We've got about five riders all on the same oh. piece of real estate. Yeah, that's quite a shot right there. Oh, it's awesome. All led by Hamaker, putting in a good run here in fourth. Voland in third. Let's give you the motosport.com whole shot replay. It was a battle between Jet Lawrence and Justin Cooper early for the start in this one. As you can see, you see Jet got a pretty good jump, and then Justin Cooper came from the middle out of nowhere. And then as you can see, he kind of pushed at the front end a little bit, did a great job saving that, but that opened up the door for Jet Lauren, or Jet. Yep, that's right. Jet ends up getting the whole shot. And Cooper just kept it pinned yeah. on the outside. Uh, was able to save it that time, but later in the lap, he went down while leading. And that is what's put Cooper in seventh. He's in this mix right now. Nice move by Thrasher, and he's got the spot, taking fourth from Hamaker, and here comes Hampshire. Oh, look at RJ. He's going to. Oh, is he going to get him? Oh, that was close. Almost had contact. Now, will this inside hold up? Oh, RJ's trying Man, to get the he middle. Was, he lost traction there. He was sliding coming down into there and trying to, trying to make the move and carry as much speed as possible to get a run on uh, Thrasher. And that is classic RJ Hampshire. Wheels were sliding. He doesn't care. He makes the pass, and he almost got Thrasher as well. Look at this battle. Yes. I mean, we're, we're, we're a good bit into the race now, and it is a, it's like I said, a freight train. You yeah. don't see this. Five riders <laughs> in the same turn at the same time. So Cooper and Hampshire, oh, mistake there. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out. I think that might have been Shimoda. The rider who's on the short end of this stick is Hamaker. He's been zapped by this entire group, but then uh, Shimoda made the mistake as he watched two Cowie teammates battle it out. This could be a good recovery from Cooper if he can stay with this group. And he is right there. Thrasher, Hampshire, Cooper. 
Man, look at the Time intensity, and, uh, look at the intensity of these guys. I mean, they're just going into these jump faces. They're throwing the bike sideways. They're pushing the bike down, doing everything that they can to try to gain an advantage, to try to try to one-up someone and make a move. I mean, look, Jeremy, you watch this, and you swear this is a battle for the lead. Oh, I know. It's insane. Yeah, but the, there is a seven-second gap to Volan, and then a 13-second gap to Hunter Lawrence, who's leading this race. He stretched it out to 2.6 over Jet. Oh, good battle here, though, as Thrasher's trying to hang on under the pressure from Hampshire and Cooper. So are you a little impressed with Cooper getting it back together after the first lap crash? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like I said, it's a little bit demoralizing when you go down on lap one just because you lose so many positions, right? Um, but he's doing a great job. He's rebounding. Um, he's trying to move forward. He's got a couple guys right here. And if he can get clean of these guys, you never know. Volan's not too far up ahead. Maybe, maybe he could make a hard charge at the end. Hampshire makes the move in the rollers on Thrasher. So Hampshire is clear. He's in fourth. Let's see if he can get away from this battle now that he's no longer in it. Instead, he's at the front of it as Hampshire tries to close. And now we've got more battles going on. Shimoda. Making the move. Yeah, he got around Cooper, and now he's taking Thrasher. So Shimoda again, late in the race, turning it up. It's what you've seen from Shimoda as of late. Checking back in with the lead duo. Hunter was 2.6. It's 2.3 seconds, the lead over his brother. Hunter Lawrence looking for revenge today. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. Motosport.com. Make your next ride your best ride. And by Monster Energy. Unleash the beast. Back to Spring Creek here, round seven. Lucas Oil Pro Motocross and Hunter Lawrence is stepping up. Struggle last time out of Southwick, lost a series points lead to his brother Jet. He has responded by getting around Jet and pulling away, but now Jet is beginning to put it back together. Yeah, I'm not surprised whatsoever by Jet kind of snaking back in there a little bit. I mean, this is a, it's a little bit of a yo-yo effect, and uh, we've seen this many times. Yep, Hunter will stretch it, Jet will close back in, Hunter will stretch it back out. It was 2.9 seconds the gap, now it's down to 1.8. Let's check him there, third place rider, credit to Max Voland here. He was in a battle earlier, he's pulled away from that. And now he's in no man's land. Cannot see the Lawrence brothers 18 seconds ahead. But he's got seven seconds on Hampshire. Yeah, he's doing, he's having a great auto going right now. And if I'm him right now, the biggest focus I have is, all right, we know the Lawrence brothers are up there. I'm sure he's gauging them somewhere up ahead on the track. He's, he's reading his pit board from his mechanic. And at this point, it's just like another day at the practice track. You're racing your lap time. And all right, can I keep it consistent? Can I lower it a little bit? Maybe it, we want to obviously catch the Lawrence brothers and we want to extend on who's behind us. So you're trying to just not even think about someone catching you? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're just racing forward. We're racing the track. Wow, so how about this? Joe Shimoda, he was at the back of that train and now he's at the front of it, including this making a move on RJ Hampshire, so Shimoda's doing it again in the second half of the race. He's been really, really strong at the end of the moto, so it's I'm, I'm, I'd be really curious to see, Jason, what, what he's been doing different during the week. Is something, is he training differently? Like, what, what, what's been the difference? Well, he's working with Nick Way now. It's a fairly recent addition. You and I saw Nick Way about 10 minutes before this moto began, but he wasn't really giving up what the difference was over there, but there's no doubt Joe has turned it up yeah, the last we, couple of weeks. We definitely teed him up a little bit, and he was pretty, he pretty tight-lipped over there. Huh? <laughs> he, he did not crack. Yeah. Uh, so Hampshire, let's see if he can hang on to the rear fender of Shimoda. And then next up, you would have Cooper, who is your early race leader, but he tipped over at the bottom one of the hills. So it's a moto of what could have been for Justin Cooper. And up front, no change. It was a 1.8 second lead. It's two seconds flat, so it's about the same. Oh, now Jets cut it down to 1.2 as they hit the next timing loop. So let's check back in with the Lawrences. That's about as close as Jet has been, I'd say, in the last 10 minutes. So now only six minutes and two laps to go. This moto feels like it's going quickly. Yeah, it's starting to get tight. Maybe he's starting to throw the afterburner on right now. And uh, this is what I would be doing. I remember, you know, like when you're, you're he's in a great position. This is the position I would want to be in. Um, he's had an opportunity to study his brother and to learn. And then it's time to, to apply it and, and start putting some pressure on him. Well, remember, even when Hunter made the pass, which is in the corner that's coming up right after these jumps, 
To me, it looked like Jet was fine with giving up the number one spot. I don't think he was fine with going almost three seconds back. I mean, Hunter really put the power to the ground and extended it, the gap. So now the question is, does Jet have the speed to close back in and challenge him again, or is this Hunter's moto? You know, I almost wonder, Jason, if if maybe maybe Hunter's a little stronger on one side of the track. Okay. And then maybe Jet's a little stronger on the other side. I mean, I've had that before, and um, you know, maybe you know maybe that could be a scenario. That is true, because we keep seeing that yo-yo, as you say, the gap stretches and gets closer, stretches and get closer. Jet's right back on it again, 1.4 seconds as we go through the sand whoops. Dealing with lap traffic now. Oh, that got a little scary there for Jet. Yeah. Uh, generally, is the leader the one that's going to get, the, doesn't always work that way, but it, it's the first one to get to the lap traffic. Yeah. That make it harder. Yeah, if you're the first guy coming through, it's definitely tough. You know, the flags do help. Uh, but then, obviously, you know, the guy that they're coming up on is riding their own race as well. So they're trying to, you know, um, just keep racing forward. So, yeah, I'd, I'd say sometimes in, in, in Jet's position, it, it, it tends to be a, ooh, ooh. Ooh, that was tough. Yeah, that's lappers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hunter had to thread the needle there. Gets around three riders. And the lead is about as small as it has been. It's down to one second now. So Jet's putting in a charge. Hunter's dealing with lap traffic, managing it well. Back down Mount Martin we go. This is where Hunter was so fast earlier in the race on the downhill. Look, he does stretch it back out. Yeah. He's got something figured out on that Mount Martin going down. Yeah. When you, if you're able to. Ooh, did you see? Wow. I, that wasn't on purpose, right? No. His front wheel's never in that rut. Yeah, it looked pretty deep there, but he was he was on the gas. He was trying to drive out of that turn, and then, yeah, that, <laughs> that was impressive. Wow, front wheel never in the rut. Slid the rear tire the entire way. And if anything, yeah, I think it's this section of the track. Works a little better for Hunter. As you're saying, maybe the other side goes the other way, but he's definitely stretched it. So what a bounce back for Hunter Lawrence. So far, so good. Plenty of time left in this moto for Jet Lawrence to put in a charge, but the gap is 1.7. Never mind. All right, so here it is, three minutes and two laps to go. Can Jet respond? They've got 27 seconds over Volan. It is unbelievable how they have checked out, and this is not the first time this year. It is a private Lawrence Brothers duel at the front. You know what's kind of crazy? It's probably the exact same thing during the week. You know that who's ever faster, they get a lap time before they go out to find out who's faster. And then if, if Jet's faster, he goes behind Hunter. And then if they, they're teeing off like this during the week. Well, when riders ride together, myself as a journalist, you always ask who's faster. And they always say, really, it depends on the day. And I always figured that was just an easy diplomatic answer. But you lived it. That really does happen. Yeah, absolutely. There's times where my brother would crush me. Yep. yep. And then, like, if I go first or, you know, vice versa. And, and, and it just really helps keep you. Sometimes you're, you know, if you're a little tired or a little sluggish, just having that person there kind of helps elevate your, your level a little bit during the week. Well, that's what the Lawrence brothers have done. And they will say over and over the fact that Jet got to learn from his older brother, who was already at a high level, has helped him tremendously. But no doubt the gap is a little bigger here than it was a lap ago. So Jet with a charge, Hunter with a response. Hunter just went 214.8. Jet went 215.0. But this first half of the lap has been better for Hunter, and this section of the track they're entering has generally been better for Hunter as well. Let's see if he can maintain that. Down Mal Martin. And sending it down. ATS drone cam shows you it is not over yet no definitely not i really like that drone shot you're able to see a little bit more of uh what the riders are able to view and what they're having to deal with for track conditions so hunter responding to every challenge from jet in this one and what a huge statement it would be if he could do this and he started behind jet in it jet made a pass or he started behind him made the move when jet got held up jet made a pass hunter got him back so they've both had their opportunities I'd be curious to see what, they, what the mechanics are putting on the pit board at. We're getting pretty late in the race, you know. Maybe, maybe there's a little motivational post there or something going there for those guys. Let's send it back down to Jason Thomas. Guys, speaking of that, I've been watching the pit boards each and every lap, and there's been no panic, no urgency, no change. They're just counting down the laps and giving them their lap time. So I think they're just trying to keep them in the zone and letting them sort it out between the two. All right, thanks, JT. We're watching Voland here. Solid run for third. Be the first moto podium of the year for him. So the kid here out of Northern California, Really rough stretch in Supercross, but he's putting it back together here in motocross. 
And what he said coming into this series is that he just going to try to pretend Supercross didn't even happen and instead try to pick up where he left off in the Motocross Championship a year ago where he was consistently a top 10 guy. Third in the Moto, this would be a big boost. Yeah, this would be a big boost, you know, and then obviously he's going to have a lot of confidence lined up for Moto2 and, and, and looking to kind of do the same thing he's doing right now. Well, it could be overall podium if he's able to do that. Volan is 10th in the points, has one top five in a Moto, so that's why this podium would be a big breakthrough for him. But it looks like Joe Shimoda's coming up on uh -oh. him. Uh-oh. And it's getting late in the race. There's three to go. He smells blood in the water. Hey. I tell you, I'm full gas to try to get that move. You want that podium spot. You said blood in the water. You know, we used to call Eli Tomac the shark in the water. I, I think we're going to go with the Shimoda <laughs> shark here because every moto, this is what he does. Yeah. He does his best work late. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he's just if he could get a little better start, you know, you'd like to see what would happen. But, you know, need, needless to say, he's just out there hard charging. He was about 14th because we saw Justin Cooper throw the lead away and pick it up, and Shimoda was right there with him. 13th, 14th position. So he's climbed all the way up to fourth. Can he get that podium? It's, oh, it's getting tight between the brothers. Uh-oh, Jet is right there. It's going to be two to go when they get to the finish line stripe. So Jet's not out of it. Now, every time he's made it close, Hunter has been able to counter. Can Hunter do it again with two to go? Oh, oh he makes a big mistake. Uh-oh, oh. Jet's right there. Hunter able to get back to the inside to block it. Listen to the crowds coming to life. Two to go, wheel to wheel. Hunter versus Jet. This is going to be a lot of pressure now. When you see that two lap board and someone's on your butt like that, man, it's it's a lot to deal with. Everything on the line here. This would be a six point swing in the championship depending on which direction it goes. Let's get three more points for a win over a second, but also mental and confidence. Hunter almost got the straight up moto win on Jet, but Jet got him at high point. We haven't seen them really battle much since. Can Hunter get the advantage this time? We'll watch both battles with the fly. Battle box, Shimoda versus Volan. Versus Volan, here we go. They're teeing up, two laps to go. Oh, look at Jet on the inside of Hunter. They're side by side. Oh, we got lappers. Hunter's going to get blocked and Jet's into the lead. He did get held up in the lap traffic. Hunter's going to have to send it now with a lap and a half to go. Oh, man. He got held up again. Both of those lap rider, and they absolutely ruined oh, Hunter back no. there. He got absolutely ruined by two different riders, and that might have changed everything. You know he was going to try to respond, but it might be difficult now. There will be one lap to go, one more run through the whoops. Oh, it's not over yet. Hunter's coming back. Yeah, it's going to be a last lap, maybe the end of the end of the race, end of the track, kind of. Maybe he can make a move, but he's got a little bit of ground to make up for sure. Uh, how do you maintain the composure with that traffic? Well, it's just, it's frustrating for sure. You know he was like, dang it, man, you guys needed to get out of the way, but there's nothing he can do about it. Just put your frustration into this last lap and, and give it everything you got to try to get your brother. Oh, I think we're going to see that full send mode for Hunter Lawrence now as Jet has taken the lead from him. Obviously, Jet knows that Hunter's going to try to come back, so he will try to put up his defenses. This last lap's going to be a good one. And we go back to this battle as Voland is looking to hold on for a third at the top of Mount Martin. You can see the gap, by the way. Yeah, that's crazy. It's a big gap. Yeah. Yeah, that is wild how far back this battle for third is. 30 seconds off the lead. As Shimoda putting the pressure on. White flag is out between Jet and Hunter. And Volan's got to fight for this one, be his first moto podium. Can he hold off Shimoda? Shimoda continues to close. Meanwhile, it's 1.1 is the gap between the lead duo. Oh, Shimoda's right there. Oh, back it's leaders. tightened back up. Woo Here we go. He's all in. All right, into the sand whoops. Can Hunter get a drive? We'll watch both battles here with a fly battle box. Hunter's got a shot. He's back up to the rear wheel of Jet. More lap traffic. More lappers. This time Hunter clears it no problem. So does Jet. Here we go. Oh, it's going to be an all-out attack oh, from yeah, 96. Oh, yeah, it's tight now. He's on the rear wheel. He's on the inside. Jet powers out. Able to hold the lead. A couple of these downhills. There are passing opportunities back yes, here. Yes, absolutely. All right, can Hunter get this done? 
Big drive into the corner. Here's the downhill. Yep, this is a good passing opportunity with Mount Martin. Oh, Jet, you see it came in pretty hard and that front wheel almost didn't stick in that rut. And that was a half crash right there. That wheel was not where he wanted it. Yeah. Somehow Jet's able to save it. Shimoda trying to make the move. He's continuing to watch the battle box. Volans fighting with all he has for that podium spot. Meanwhile, the leaders back down Mount Martin as that battle for third goes up. You think Hunter's really trying to get off the brakes right now and let that thing coast down that hill? Yeah, but he wasn't as close this time as he was in some of the previous laps. Running out of time is Hunter Lawrence. Same with Shimoda. Shimoda's going to try Shimoda's got to run. Line. Here we go. And oh, Volan closes it off well. Good oh. job by Volan to get the drive. Hunter's right back on him. It's going to be a run to the checkers. Two turns to go. Is there anything Hunter can do here? Ah, man, I think Jet might be able to protect this inside. Here he goes. Smart move right here, going, going tight. Last turn. Jet goes inside. Hunter goes inside. Lap traffic is there. Jet Lawrence wow. takes a big moto victory. What a battle. Shimoda got the move on Volan. Volan's going to try to come back. Cannot get the drive after the downhill. So Shimoda has done it on the last lap, has pulled it away from Volan. And now we're going to see what Volan has to try to get it back. Man, I think Joe was ninth or 10th right off the get-go out of the gate, and that was a that's a good recovery. Well, even further, we had him about 14th or so when Cooper had gone down. Really? All the way up to third. So the fans loving that battle with Jet and Hunter, the advantage Jet, and again, a podium in the moto for Joe Shimoda, who is relentless late in these races. And the brothers, will they bench race it out again? Uh, Hunter has to be so frustrated with the lappers. That cost him the lead and some gap. He did just about everything right in that one, but comes up just short again. Good thing about motocross is we're going to have a rematch later. Yeah, that's the beauty. Oh, here's the pass, Jeremy, with uh, Shimoda set us up here. Look at that. Just letting off the brakes a little bit more and really just kind of sending it. He knows what's on the line. He really wants that third place and just carries a little bit more, more, more momentum and sweeps around the outside. Very impressive by Shimoda there. That was the clutch pass. And don't forget, in the next top of the next hour, we'll have our 450 class and then Moto2. So expect another Lawrence versus Lawrence showdown. Moto1 here at Millville. Advantage, Jet. The 50th anniversary season of Pro Motocross is brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. With a nationwide network of parts and care, Napa helps you get up and go. Honda, celebrating 50 years of off-road dominance. And by Lucas Oil, keep that engine alive. And there is the Spring Creek at Spring Creek and fans get to enjoy the cool down session there. That was hot, the on-track action in this 250 Moto 1. We'll give it to you with our Lucas Oil race recap to show you the highlights. Justin Cooper wrestling for the lead with Jet and Hunter Lawrence. Nice move here by Cooper on the downhill. Yeah, absolutely. Took a really clean line. You can see it carries a lot of momentum. It just gets you inside and goes powering on up the hill. Yep, so uh, one downhill was great, and this one not so great. Yeah, maybe it was a little slippery. They watered the track. It was the opening lap. And Chet Lawrence gets held up. That allows Hunter to take over the lead. Big crash here for Michael Moser. We don't see exactly what happened. This is in the uh, Sam Whoop section, but that was the end of his moto. Not sure if it's the end of his day. Now it went back and forth for the majority of the race. Hunter had a nice lead built up. Jet's able to close back in with Hunter making the mistake. Takes the lead back. But it was an awesome duel. The yes. entire moto for 30 plus two. These guys were all out and it was amazing to watch. Absolutely, so Jet has the lead. Look at Hunter come back. Almost gets him here. They need a really good line in the corner after the finish line. This is what he's going to use to take the lead. Wow. So there is Hunter back into the number one spot, and it looked like it was all going his way. Jet closes in, and the lap traffic did not do the night. Yeah, unfortunately, favor. Hunter's probably pretty upset about this deal, but that's racing. You know, we all, all got to go through it, right? So there it is. Jet's able to take the lead. Hunter tried to respond. This is how close it is at the finish. At high point, they battled. Final margin of victory, 0.5 seconds today. 0.5 seconds again. <laughs> Unreal, these yeah, races. So Jet Lawrence takes the win over Hunter. He's got to be bummed that that one got away from him. 
Send it down to the podium, get the story from Jet Lawrence. Here is Jason Thomas. Jet Lawrence, your first moto winner. That was an incredible battle. Now my question is, what's going on in the middle of the moto? You know, really strong at the beginning, really strong at the end, but in the middle you seem to lose a little bit of intensity. I've noticed it the last couple of weeks. Do you notice that or is it something you're intentionally doing? Uh, it's just kind of maintaining because I know with obviously Hunter and I have the exact same program. It's kind of uh, just weighing it out then kind of the last two laps, like just seeing if we sprint or not. So it was uh, at the start I was trying to find some lines. Hunter had some uh, uh, better sections and I had some, so it was a lot of a lot of yo-yoing a lot, so it was kind of difficult to find and just get close. He, uh, those first few laps, once he got back past me, he put that bit of distance. I could never just close it, and every time I got a little bit closer, I'd make a mistake or something like that. And uh, yeah, then at the end, he got he got pretty uh, pretty screwed by the lappers, and I ended up uh, being close enough, making a making the pass on. Then the last next two laps were just sending it, just trying. I make sure I trying to stay in front of him, so. Uh, Happy, just going to go back, recover, and hopefully we can get a, a good start and make uh, eliminate those mistakes. All right, so Jet Lawrence gets the win. Yep, just trying to sort out the lines. And even he knows the lap traffic was the factor. Yeah, definitely, definitely. He's a smart kid, you know. You're not a champion for, you know, you're a champion for a reason. Yep. So uh, in that moto, he gets the better of his brother Hunter. Joe Shimoda will take third in that one. That was a hard-earned late race battle with him and Max Voland. Send it back down to the podium with JT. Hunter Lawrence, second place in that moto. Now, I know you have to be a little bit frustrated, but that was an incredible battle. These people were going crazy. So how do you just fix the little small things and come back and get it done in Moto2? Uh, yeah, it was an interesting race. It was cool. I'm sure it was awesome to watch it when uh, we passed each other back and forth a few times. And uh, man, I was just pushing towards the end and I just uh, had to be better around the lap as I just read it wrong and kind of got pinned up and then Jet come through. So. Bit of a bummer, but uh, just go back, execute another good start, and just try and click off some good laps. All right, we'll see if Hunter can get it done. He had the speed to do it, there's no doubt. Yes, definitely, definitely. And if I'm Hunter, you know, I, the more they battle like this, the more confidence I would get. Um, you know, and he's, he obviously knows he can run with his brother. He's doing it during the week, I'm sure, and now he's doing it on race day. And we look forward to a rematch, because you got to do it twice in Lucas Oil Pro Motocross, one of the second moto coming up later on today. Let's give you the uh, upcoming schedule brought to you by motorsport.com in this series. We go to Washougal next weekend, and we have a break. A big one as uh, the majority of the industry goes down to the Monster Energy Amateur Championship down at Loretta Lynn's Ranch. We'll resume with Unadilla, Bud's Creek, Ironman, and Fox Raceway in California. We'll wrap up this championship on September the 3rd. Joe Shimoda, hard-earned fight for a podium. Let's go to the box with JT. Joe Shimoda, late race heroics there. What went on at the beginning of the race to put you so far back? Uh, like usual, the start, just been struggling and struggling, and yeah, just couldn't get it. And yeah, when you're that far behind, it's so hard to to uh, come back. So uh, yeah, hopefully for next uh, next moto, I can get a better start and fight with top guys. Yeah, and that has been the story with uh, Joe. Really, a lot of his career, a slow start. So it's not five podiums in a row in motos. Yes, but it's very impressive. You're, you're seeing improvements with this guy week in and week out, and, and ultimately that's all you can ask for. Yeah, as we can say every time, if he could start up front with those Lawrence brothers, it would be interesting to see him battle them. He definitely had the pace to do it. Last time he did start with them, which was at uh, Redbud two races ago, and he ended up getting the overall victory. Okay, so one out of four motos is complete today. We're hoping that all of them are this good with uh, the Lawrence brothers going at it. 450 Moto 1 coming up. That's going to be a good one. Yeah, Chase and uh, Eli one point apart. Chase was fastest. Yep, exactly. We'll see if the advantage could swing back his direction with Eli Tomac having put together the last three overall wins in the 450 class. So great racing to start the day with the Lawrence brothers. The majority of the way it was led by Hunter. But some trouble with the lap traffic opened the door for his brother Jet to get him and get the Moto victory. Tough break also for Justin Cooper, who crashed while leading on lap number one. Everybody has their opportunity to right the wrongs in the 250s a little bit later on today. But we'll put the focus on the 450 class. 250 Moto One is a wrap. Jet Lawrence takes the win. Stay with us for 450 Moto One.